Good morning, everyone. My name is Mary Jo Snyder. Welcome to MJ Shady Inkers. I am presenting to you the Honey Bee Bundle, which amazingly enough is back in stock. So I'm happy to share some projects with you this morning featuring that bundle. That bundle is in the mini catalog on page 30, and I'll share the images in the catalog with you shortly. Just a few quick announcements. I hope everybody is well. Um, again, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm so happy that you're here with me this morning. Um, if you're catching the replay, thank you for tuning in and watching as well. So a few announcements, just a couple of quick things. Um, the retirement list of products from the mini catalog um, and the annual catalog will be announced this week. I will show dates in, uh, in an announcement later on. Um, probably tomorrow I'll share that information. I think it's the 22nd, but I don't want to... Um, you know, mislead you. So I want to make sure I have all the accurate information for the retire, re retirement list. Hi, Rose. Hi, Lori. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm not sure who else chimed in. Let me just scroll down a little. Gail and Laura, thank you for being here this morning. Um, so a few things. Again, it's April. You have the opportunity of spending $35 and receiving the demos at a Demo Design Dream Team um, tutorial bundle with a $35 purchase. And there is the opportunity if you place a $50 order or purchase the entire ornate garden product suite, um, you will get a 90, pro, uh, it's 90 projects in that tutorial bundle. It's a mega tutorial bundle. Um, and I was so blessed to be a part of that in this training that I'm doing with Kylie and Bruno Bertucci. So that certainly is awesome to get your hands on. So you actually could um, purchase $50 to get the tutorial, you could purchase the entire bundle, you'll get a tutorial and six make and takes, including the project I designed. So, um, hi Joette, thanks for being here. So, those are those little perks for the month of April. Um, I'll have some announcements upcoming for May as well. I miss everybody. I have to be frankly honest, I miss stamping in person with people. I miss my classes. I miss Paper Pumpkin Club. I miss my stamp and scrap club. I, I, I'm so grateful for social media and having the opportunity to actually still come to you um, weekly during my Sunday Live with MJ and periodically throughout the week as I'm able to. Um, work's been increasing my duties while I'm at home, so I now have a laptop and can dial right into all the stuff I need to do at work. So I've been pretty busy with that throughout the week. So if I'm sporadic throughout the week and do less videos than, I'm, than I had been doing when I first was on social distancing, I don't want to say isolation, um, before we were assigned to work from home, um, I was able to do a few more videos than, than I have been, but you certainly want to check out my YouTube channel, which is new. Um, no lie, I developed that channel probably two years ago and never did a thing with it because I was petrified. Plus, we didn't have the amazing internet service that we have right now. So uh, we have broadband um, fiber, so we are able to upload things and videos much quicker. Um, but anyway, I don't want to bore you with all this tech details. Um, I'm so happy that you're here. And let's just get started. I'm super excited to share some amazing projects with you. Some I'm going to recreate, and some I'm just going to show you a few techniques in how to do some of the um, techniques on especially one of the projects, um, two of the projects. I'm not gonna build the entire project. One, I'm lacking supplies, um, but it's gonna be fun. A lot of treat holders, a lot of ways to share sunshine. And I thought that this bundle definitely will help you do that. So, um, and don't forget if you're sharing sunshine with others, use that hashtag share, share sunshine um, so that you can, um, and post pictures of it here on social media. Feel free to do that in the comments. Um, of my video or a post here on my page or my group so that we can um, inspire others to share a little sunshine with everyone during this time. And always, you don't have to just do it now, do it always. Um, okay, so here we are. I'm gonna flip the camera. I tried putting a post-it note on here and it did not work. So I'm gonna cover you up with my hand, flip the camera. All right, and we're gonna just get busy here and hopefully I'm gonna have you positioned where I want you without my camera flipping on me. Um, Facebook's been having some issues. Bear with me, I'm gonna have to adjust and I don't have it covered. So if you need to walk away or look away, please do so, so I'm not making you dizzy. 
It's hard to adjust my camera sometimes without wiggling everything. One more swoop and we'll be good. Someday I'm gonna get that Switcher Studio, I swear, so that I can do this with a smoother transition. <laughs> All right, I think we're gonna work with that. Hi, Sandy, hi, Ellen, thanks for being here. All right, Ellen, you like treat holders? You are going to enjoy these projects. So I'm very excited to share with you. This is the Honey Bee Bundle. Again, this is now back in the warehouse, ready to ship if you place your order for this bundle. These are the stamps and the um, dies, and I'll show you a better picture. These are projects that were designed by Stampin' Up! And um, really beautiful, just, they just warm your heart looking at the bright colors and just, I just love them. So um, you can always case the catalog, which means you look at the picture of the project in the catalog. If ever you do that and you want help with measurements, reach out to me. I'm always happy to assist with trying to figure out how to make a project if you want to duplicate something. If, especially if it's not something that I created myself that you see in the catalog, I can try and help you with basic measurements with that. So always keep that in mind and reach out to me. So these are those amazing dies. Beautiful detailed bee right here. We're gonna cut that out with, um, I think we're gonna do this in foil. Nope, we're not using that one, but I will um, show you how that works. Um, I say that and then I never get to it because I forget where I left off, so bear with me, but hopefully I'll be able to share all these amazing images. We're gonna use this bee dye, this one, and the honeycomb today. So I'm um, very excited to share some cute projects with you. And these are the stamps. Wishing you sunshine and happiness. I absolutely love that. Celebrate every moment. We so need to do that. And this is perfect for those um, things you want to send to someone thinking of you, sweet friend. Just saying hello, thank yous. It's perfect for right now. And, and just to appreciate, um, show your appreciation for others. So I already have my stamps uh, already on block. So I'm just going to set that aside for now. And I'm going to share with you the first project. At the end of my broadcast, I also am going to share with you some happy mail that I've gotten myself. Good morning. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Mary. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to share some cute little projects I've gotten in the mail. Um, there's been some issue this morning with the lighting with my phone in itself, and I totally forgot to turn on my Do Not Disturb, so I'm hoping I don't have any issues there. Whoops! Um, so if we get disconnected, I will certainly come back and um, start where I left off. So this is the first project. Yeah, see the lighting's totally weird in, um, with my phone this morning. I'm not sure why. But anyway, we're going to just go on. I'm actually going to try and recreate this differently because the petals here are so delicate. And it's actually that little, um, you kind of fold this together and it opens up like so and then you have a little space to write your message. So, and then you gotta tuck this back in to close it, but it's really hard with all those petals because you certainly don't wanna ruin the petals and then some get stuck behind. So I'm gonna try and do this differently. Um, this was my first attempt with this card, so I hope that I'm able to recreate it um, for you today without any complications. So definitely want a piece of ribbon. This is certainly more than I need. I think you need about six inches, maybe five and a half of the gold um, metallic edged whisper white ribbon, which to me actually looks sort of vanilla color, but I think it's the gold that kind of sets that off for me. You need a piece of designer series paper and this designer series paper is that ornate garden designer series paper. And I'm going to use the old olive with the foil um, design on it and it is four by five and a quarter. You have a standard card base that is cut at four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So we're gonna go ahead and crease that fold. You're going to need gold metallic pearls which come in a set of gold and silver and there's like several. There's like 700 or something on there I think. You need, and I actually have two pieces of scrap paper, Whisper White, um, in case I didn't have enough on one of them. We'll set those over here. And actually, I think I already cut the ribbon. I didn't realize that. Everything's stuck in my bag, so we'll just toss it out of there. Two pieces of foil. Um, I do do this because when you run your foil through your Big Shot, and say you have this mess going on, um, because it's so loved and used, 
the impression of that might end up on your foil. So I always cut the foil down to the size that I need um, just so I am, and I actually don't need this piece. wonder why I have that out. I need this piece. This piece is a piece that is two by, I'm sorry, two and a half by two and three fourths of gold foil. I have cut out three circles using the second to the smallest die in the circle in the layering circle dies. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that to make this piece a little bit different. And of course the inside piece of Whis <clears throat> Whisper White, excuse me, that is four by two and a half and that's so you can write your little message to somebody. So let me actually dig out this piece of, it is six inches that I cut because um, it's stuck in the bottom of my six inch cellophane bag. I've already cut the ribbon. That must have just been a spare piece. Okay, so we obviously are gonna do some heat embossing and I did not grab a piece of um, basic black cardstock, but thankfully I left my cardstock out and we're gonna grab a piece for the B. Um, this is my little storage for, which I have to still put the um, outside piece of paper, but that's what I do with my scraps. So they're readily available and I don't have to cut a full sheet of paper because that is nauseating when you have to do that, right? <laughs> so anyway, all right, we're gonna do some heat embossing. So let's get some of this stuff out of the way. We'll do that part first. And you're gonna need your medium daisy punch, which is this one. And your, and I do not know the name of this. This is one of those fancy label punches in the um, mini catalog that I thankfully just got. It was on back order. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so you need your embossing buddy. And we are going to, if I can get it open, I don't even know why it's sealed. I usually don't do that. Grab your embossing buddy, and you're just going to rub your piece of basic black cardstock, scrap paper. I'm gonna show you a little trick with this too. You're gonna to grab that big B stamp. You're gonna stamp that Invisimark on your piece of scrap, like so. Hopefully that's okay. It looks like it's missing some, eh, hopefully we'll be okay. We'll try it out and see. Oh, I don't wanna put that away because I have to show you a technique with that after. Okay, oops. So we'll set that aside. I'm gonna grab this just because it's easier for me and I can just set it aside and clean it up after, minus the dog hair. This is not a Stampin' Up! product. This was something that was given to me by my mom or Lisa, I can't remember whose it was, um, but they gave it to me because they had an extra one. You just dump your gold embossing powder on there and you're going to tap off the excess, flick it a few times. We are cutting this out, so it's really not a big ordeal if there's stuff over on the sides, because you're gonna cut that out with, um, with your dies anyway. So we're just gonna set that embossing powder aside because I don't need it. I am going to plug in my heating tool, and I'm actually gonna be getting um, one from Stampin' Up. This is a hand-me-down as well, but I understand the Stampin' Up heat tool actually has a better temperature than some that you can get in your craft supply store. So always keep that in mind because you don't want to burn your paper in your project. So this is gonna get a little noisy and hopefully you'll be able to see this once it gets heated up. It'll start to transform right in front of your eyes. Can you see that all right? There you go, now you can see it a little bit. And of course, it gets a little hot, so don't burn yourself. Make sure all of that is embossed and melted, like so. Okay? All right, now we're going to set that aside in a place where you're not going to cause yourself any... Um, oops, I just unplugged my phone instead of my heat tool. I'm actually going to set this over on the floor, away from the paper because the end of it is super hot and that's the only embossing I'm doing today. So I don't want to burn anything that might be nearby it. Okay, so now we have our die cutting machine and we are going to grab this larger B die. <clears throat> Hopefully you're in a good position to see what I'm doing. 
Okay, um, can I slide my grid paper up one inch so we can see a little better? How about I move my camera because my grid paper is taped to my table. How's that? Hopefully that's good. When I move the big shot, hopefully we'll, um, we'll um, <clears throat> have a better view of that. Okay, so I have my magnetic platform and these dies, I love the new dies, um, the way that they are, uh, they line right up to the image so you can get a more precise cut. Um, and we need our top plate. And I use a magnetic platform because I actually am framing a stamped image um, just so it keeps things in place. We're just gonna run that through and try our best not to move the camera, which I don't think I was very successful. But there is your B. Sorry, I'm like way close. Cute. Hi, Julie. Hi, Vicki. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. All right, so we're done with that piece of paper, and we are done with the big shot for now. We're just going to move that aside. Hopefully, I'll set it on the floor and hope I don't trip over it. I'm setting it on the floor because my counter is covered. <laughs> so, all right, put that back so we don't lose it. And now we are going to go back to um, Rose. Is this better? Is it better with the... Okay, awesome. Hopefully you guys got a better view here. All right, so we are going to grab the pieces we need. We are gonna do some punching. That's for the inside. Oh, we need to cut that, forgot that. We'll get back to that. Um, we need to stamp our sentiment in. Not that, Memento Black ink. And we are doing Thinking of You, Sweet Friend. We're just gonna stamp that on our scrap. And we are going to grab our fancy, I think it's fancy label punch. If somebody knows a correct name for this, feel free to shout that out so that um, everybody has the right name for it. All right, so I'm gonna cut some of that end off so that it fits in there nicely. And I'm going to hopefully center this. I don't think my piece of paper is big enough. You know the trick to this? Well, I'm just going to use my hand, but there's a trick to that. I think I've showed you that in the past. All right, move that out of the way. We're done with that punch. We now have our sentiment. We're going to do some punching of... Now, since I'm doing this differently, well, I'm still going to punch three of these. I'm not sure if I still need three, but we're going to punch them anyway because I have circles, and I'm going to hope that... I'm going to be able to do this correctly with the circles because that's not how I initially built the card or put the card together when I first designed it. So the one thing you do want to do, you're going to also use your classic label punch for this. We want to first put our ribbon to the base of our card and you're just going to adhere that by, oh, there's my snail. You're gonna adhere that, this is a brand new one, so by adding a little adhesive to the back, taping it to the bottom and around. And you can cut off the excess if it's, if it's gonna be an annoyance to you. Actually, I wanna raise that some, I think. I didn't position that right, so bear with me. Let's just do this. And I think we're about an inch above the bottom of the card layer, like so, okay? Because we do want to have room to put that honeycomb piece on there. And now we're gonna attach this to the top of the card. And again, when you're making your projects, you can use whatever um, tape is you, or um, adhesive that is your um, go-to. You don't have to use snail. You can certainly use Tombow glue if that's a preference. Okay, now we want our classic label punch. And what you're gonna do is go all the way in where it stops and you're just gonna punch that out like so, so you have that hole. And that's just to the top layer of the card. Okay, like so. And now we are going to We'll come back to our sentiment and stuff. 
um, we can hold off on taping that. Let's grab our circles. I'm gonna hopefully build this correctly so I'm not like having to redo things. First of all, usually I like to um, use my bone folder to get a little bit of dimension on here, but because it's gonna be folded in, in and out of our card base, I don't want to frustrate myself and, and, and go through all that because it's just gonna be too much for the flower to be curled. Move some stuff aside. I am gonna get out my scoring tool. And the way I did this, I actually found a line. It doesn't have to go flush. Actually, you can just find a line Put it right in the center of your flower and just score it. It's just easier to fold your daisy that way. Now the other one, it's gonna be a little tricky. You want to point your petal where the line is and then come and fold. You're gonna fold there. It's gonna seem a little awkward, but we'll get her. And then this one, I honestly don't think I'm gonna need that, but we'll come back to it if I do. We're just, I'm kinda on the fly at the moment because I'm changing up how I did this. Okay, so we definitely want these to be together where the fold is, and my intent was so that they would overlap like that. Makes sense? And we're going to fold those, okay? I probably need to do that to my B, but since we've already got those score lines going on, and don't worry, it looks a little messed up right now because I haven't adhered it together. Grab yourself some glue dots, and I'm just gonna put a glue dot on one of these, and then where I folded them, adhere it together. So now we have this flower that will fold, okay? Like so, perfect. We're going to fold two circles in half, And I didn't bother scoring these. There's no big deal to do that. Two circles in half. And again, this is the second smallest circle. Sorry if I'm not looking. Label me fancy punch. Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Appreciate that. Um, I'm not going to... What was I going to say? Totally got sidetracked. Okay, so you're folding two of these in half, okay? <laughs> Whatever I lost in my head will come back, hopefully. All right, and now I have to see how I did this. Oh, the B. I didn't um, crease the B, but we'll get to that, that point. So again, see how hard it is for me to grasp that flower? So what I wanna do, since I've, I don't need this third one, we are going to strategically, strategically I say, grab our tear and tape, and you can do this with Tombow. Tombow glue will work good for this too. You want to put those two circles together and put a piece of tear and tape there to hold it there, okay? And we're gonna put more tear and tape on that side, but right now we are going to put our flower on here, okay? This is gonna make it a little bit easier to pop in and out of that little secret hole there. So we want to, I'm just gonna adhere that with a glue dot right in the center, if I can find where I just put them, right in front of me, right where I put them. That's where I put them. All right, so get a couple of glue dots on the back side of your flower and center that where that fold is, well, where they come together, where those two pieces meet, make sense, okay? So now when it comes time, you actually have something to grab onto instead of all those petals. So this is gonna work out much better than the way I did it with the original design. Um, a lot of demonstrators have, have showed different ways to do this with a butterfly or the old um, dragonfly dies that we used to have that were, I still have mine, but some things I just never wanna get rid of. Okay, so then you're gonna add maybe another piece of tear and tape. Let's just remove this layer. And one thing that is better for me, although I miss my nails, it's easier for me to um, grab things, <laughs> and especially this tear and tape. All right, so this is the trick. You want to, and I should have done this first because now I don't want this to stick together. Oh, we'll do it this way. Aha! There's always a way. Pop this in here, like so. And then you're gonna spread this out you want to make sure it's where you want it 
and flatten the other side and you are going to fold that back side together. And now you have your flower that's peeking out. And now you can just grab that and pinch it close and it's gonna open nicely for you, okay? Okay, let's get that B on here. And now we're not gonna ruin those petals every time we open the card, unless you're all thumbs like me and do what I just did. All right, I did not make a score line because I don't wanna ruin the embossed look, but what I'm going to do is grab a glue dot or two and wow. put those on there and put these on the center of that flower. Okay, this is just showing you that you don't always have to use something that is, um, you know, solid right here. Like I wanted to just use the bee, but the opening was too large. So I thought, well, let me add a flower and see if that's going to work. And it's ideal for this be right okay so let's finish getting our um, stuff cut and we need to cut that piece this stuff from that gold foil that's why I had two pieces of gold foil I didn't know that initially could not remember um actually no that's not why either way all right I'm just gonna leave my metallic or my magnetic platform on there and run this through Gonna leave little pieces someday i keep saying every time i cut one of these and i'm gonna make a soccer ball with it just haven't done that yet maybe that'll be on my agenda for a youtube video <laughs> i'm like having fun with that okay and these all these little things pop out but you want to keep a couple of them well not for this project but you can keep them i actually have a bin full of them which whatever i'll use them for i'm not sure but you know if you're if you love stamping up stuff and you can make sense of what you just cut out with that, you're going to keep it, even if you end up not using it, because that's what we do. <laughs> no, I'm not a hoarder. Yes, I am. Okay, I'm going to grab my silicone mat, and I am just going to use my snail, and I'll show you. I like to use Tombow. Um, with a sponge. When I do this, you can squirt a little bit of Tombow um, and kind of use a sponge and dab it on the back of this. But because it's foil, I don't want to ruin that shine. So I'm going to run across it a little bit here and there. Hopefully I'm getting some adhesive on there. And bring my card over and just layer that on however you want it. The best part is you're gonna end up putting your sentiment on top, so it's gonna have reinforcement with um, dimensionals on the back. So grab your dimensionals, and you're gonna put one there, one there. Peel off your backing, and that goes over there, like so. And then you're gonna grab your metallic pearls, Hi, Tracy. I hope you and your family are doing well, along with everyone else here. Um, Tracy's daughter graduated with my son, Nigel. Um, very close friends. So, oops, that was last year. I can't believe it's almost been a year. I was making a comment to Nigel. He was going through something. I'm not even going to tell you the details because it was, like, way too funny, but, um, and maybe just yeah anyway <laughs> he was picking through a gift that he got for um, graduation and putting stuff away which is almost a year ago I'm like oh don't don't do anything that it was food okay <laughs> not gonna lie I'm like oh that's old don't don't save that so I looked at the date on it and it's perfectly fine matter of fact they're in my room and I've been eating them so I didn't break my teeth on them so it's all good anyway <laughs> long story short he's like mom it's not that old. I just graduated. I'm like, it's almost been a year. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that's that. A uh, silly story. But all right, we're going to pop this open so that we can put our little whisper white piece in here. Did I tell you the measurement of this? 
I'm gonna re-measure just so you have it in case I didn't. It's four by two and a half. And that's gonna just line up down at the bottom of this card so that you have a spot to write. And then you're just gonna pop that back in there like so. And there is your first project, right? Yes, Tracy, so far we're doing great, um, thank you. Uh, and yes, I like I said in the beginning, if you didn't catch, I have, I'm missing everybody. Right down to my nail tech and my, my hairdresser. So yeah, it's, it's crazy, crazy times. But glad that we're here together today like this. I'm gonna add one little, um, I forgot that I need another pearl there. I keep hitting my camera, so I'm sorry. It's, it's lower than normal. Uh, and we are going to put that right there, just to add a little bit of extra bling. Okay, there's the first project. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Put that here. And the next project we are going to, I'm just gonna demonstrate, I'm gonna show you this real quick. So Missy Shipman is, I'm, I think I've shared this before, is one of my team leaders, way, way up the, the, the line of, um, of up lines that I have. And I'm grandfathered into her team just because somewhere along the way, one of my up line belonged to her level three or whatnot. So anyway, she actually gave us this cute little treat stuff in, we had a, a class and we could purchase the class from her, and then she did an online team event. It was really awesome. So it was this cute little, this is honey. This has got honey in it, and you can, I asked her, you can purchase them from Amazon, and they have all different flavors and stuff like that. Um, so that is a straw filled with honey, and she also gave us this cute little tea bag, Cup of Calm. So what an amazing gift this could be for someone, like, make mass produce them and send them to a healthcare facility or a hospital or whatever. And then they now have a, a nice little treat. So my purpose of making this, and I was hoping it would fit in one of those memory and more envelopes. Um, but because the straw is a little bit longer, it won't do that. So if you have an envelope punch board, you can create your own envelope or you can just put it in a bag with other stuff to make somebody's day brighter or ship them, like I said, in bulk to a, a health care facility or a hospital or a doctor's office or whoever. Um, even your local volunteer ambulance corps um, would appreciate something like this, just saying. Um, but I wanted to use... I wanted to be able to create something to gift this to someone. So I'm not going to put the entire thing together, but I, I'm going to show you how to create the base. So if you were to get tea bags and stuff like that, um, you would be able to recreate this and, and gift this to somebody. So, and I can't wait to share that with Missy. I had to message her yesterday so that I could um, get her guidance on where to find these amazing honey straws. Um, I just have to find my notes. So this Whisper White base is actually the same measurement as one of those um, assorted memory and more cards, which I have in a pack here. I just started from scratch because I don't have a lot of these left, but it is the same size as, oh, maybe it's a little bigger. Oh, that's why I actually did do it a little bigger. So hopefully I got my measurements right. And I'm not going to mess you up. Let's compare and see if this is the same size height wise. Nope. Let's cut off a fourth inch it looks like from the top. Um, so then I'll give you the correct measurements. All right, so a fourth inch is going to bring this down to, I wanna say six and a fourth. Yes, it does need to be six and a fourth. So my measurements are right, I just didn't have this cut to size. All right, so this measures six and a fourth by eight and a half, okay? And you are going to grab your scoring tool. You can certainly use your paper trimmer to do the scoring. I have a personal preference to using this um, just because I think the score lines are a little bit, it, I don't have to run so much. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the paper trimmer and, and the scoring option. I just have a preference for this unless I'm scoring at 1 um, So, So with this, you wanna put the long side to the top and you're gonna score at four, four and a quarter, 
and four and a half. That's all the scoring. And then you're going to grab your paper trimmer and you're gonna bring this in and you're gonna lay this up to the top and you are going to measure over to you one inch. So you have one inch, you're gonna bring your blade up to that four and a half inch mark where you scored and you're going to run your blade to the four inch mark just making that slip between the two score lines. And then you're gonna move it over a half an inch and you're gonna do the same thing. So I'm initially here. This is another half inch, but I'm actually gonna measure from this side and I'm gonna go right here. Okay, yes, half inch. Again, you're gonna bring that down. You're gonna point this little thing here. I don't know if you can see that really well, but there is a line right there that will line up to the measurements on your trimmer shield right here. That's why they have those measurements there for you. And again, you're gonna go up to the four inch mark. You're gonna flip it and you're gonna do the same to the other side. So you're gonna put this over to one inch and you're going to go up to that four inch score line Move it over another half inch and bring this down again, four and a half, and crease it like that. And if it goes a little over, no worries. You're not gonna harm your, your project. So the key is now we are going to fold it as you would a normal card base and crease those edges. Just be careful you're not damaging where you've cut, okay? Then you're gonna flip this over, if your fingers are working, and you're gonna to go to that other score line. And you're going to varnish that. You definitely wanna varnish those edges so that you are able to do what I need to show you next. There's this little red squirrel outside just having a field day, running from the house to the tree, to the woods, Someday. <laughs> Just kidding. Hi, Bonnie. Okay, so now you have this kind of an M fold, right? Once you get that those creases done, kind of looks like an M for MJ. You are going to go in here and you are going to hold your bone folder and you're going to pop out those pieces that you created slits for. And you now have that little spot where you can put that straw of honey. Okay? Like so. Perfect. So to do the rest of this, you certainly can use the paper and, and stuff that you want. But I'm going to give you a run through as to what these measurements are. So the designer series paper and the base layer, so the old olive layer, is actually three and three-fourths by six and a quarter. The designer series paper is three and a half by six. And I think that's wrong because the card is six and a quarter. So you want it a quarter inch less. So I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna correct these measurements that I have written here and I'm gonna share them. And I always say I'm gonna do that and then I forget to, but I definitely will share these um, so that you have them. And I think that is five and three fourths. So. The old olive is six by three and three quarters. The designer series paper is five and three fourths by three and a half. You can embellish the way you want to. I use the honeybees. I just stamped in, um, excuse me, memento black ink on so saffron. And I can't wait to get my hands on this bubble bee paper because I know the so saffron goes very nicely with the, the yellow shades in this paper but I'm like dying to get my hands on that new, um, the new in colors in the Bumblebee in color, which is featured in this paper. Okay, off on a tangent. So I used 16 inches of ribbon so that I could come around the two layers before adhering it to the card base and tied it in a bow. I used my classic label punch in both, um, in Whisper White for the sentiment, um, the Early Espresso and Old Olive and created that banner. On the inside, this pocket, is the designer series paper is cut at three and a half by two and a fourth. 
the cardstock is two and a half by four and that's not right. Yes, by four and three fourths because you're going to actually score at a quarter on each side after you adhere the pieces together and cut out the half circle. So it's a little confusing. So maybe I should type up directions for you um, because I this is bulky and it wouldn't fit just in a regular pocket. So what I did was I scored, pinched it together a little bit to um, have a little bit of the card base border. And I put some adhesive backing um, the, the strips of dimensionals that you can get on the inside there just to pop it up some to tuck that tea bag in there. And of course, these pieces mimic the pieces on the front, so they're the same measurements. And then you just stamp your sentiment, add a little bumblebee, and you're good to go. So that is that cute little project. So, and again, these are those pearlized doilies with a um, circle from the layering circles in the background. So there's that project. Hopefully you can recreate these if you want to do that and purchase those straws filled with honey. Okay, so let me show you the next project. This cute little guy, and I don't know if you can get your hands on any. How stinking cute is that bumblebee piece of candy? I love it, love it. I was walking through the store buying essentials and getting Easter stuff when um, for baskets for home and stuff like that. So I came across these bees and bugs or bugs and bees and oh thanks mary um and thanks bonnie thank you everyone um so these are adorable just saying they're absolutely adorable and it, it was in the easter candy so i don't know if you can do a search um with the company or um on amazon to see if you can find something that is similar but how stinking cute are these so i'm gonna make some with the ladybug stamp set as well I just think they're so cute. But not only that, how adorable is that foil? Can you not reuse some of this foil for something? Definitely. It's got those cute little flowers embossed on it. I don't know, I'm just excited about the whole package. So again, these are, and they are um, hazelnut filled. So again, you have to be cautious of people's allergies, but if you can get them in milk chocolate um, with just some kind of chocolate cream filling or something like that, um, you certainly can, uh, can do that as well so um or any this this i'll show you an alternate where you can just put one of those ferrero rochers in here um because this also that those also fit perfect in here and i got this idea and i neglected to write her name down stamp in texas was the um <laughs> was the video i watched and i don't know her name but i'll get her name um i watched a video this morning and I actually put this together i thought it was the cutest thing ever so i'm gonna pop out this bumblebee because i'm gonna need that and set these aside and what you need for this project so again it's inspired by Stampin' Texas I have a piece of designer series paper that is cut from the um, ornate garden designer series paper and it is three eighths of an inch by 12 I have a piece of daffodil delight I wanted to use a brighter yellow to coordinate with the bumblebee and that measures at and I know I have these written down the this piece is one and three fourths by seven and three fourths, and you're gonna score at three fourths, two and a half, three, four and three fourths, five and a fourth, and seven. Okay, on the long side. You need a piece of that beautiful black organdy ribbon that has all those sprinkles, speckles of glitter in there to tie around the top. And I think I have about 10 inches there. I'm always a little um, generous with ribbon. If I don't have the spool of ribbon, I just grab a piece that I might have left over from something um, or that has already been cut from the roll. <clears throat> and I just trim it as needed. Um, all right, so we have another piece of Daffodil Delight and this is five by two and three fourths. And on the long side, and you can't really see me, sorry about that, on the long side, it is scored at one half, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, and five and a half. On the short side, it is scored at, we'll pretend this is one, one half and two and a half, okay? And now I'm gonna show you, and of course you need a piece of window sheet that measures one and five eighths square, okay? 
And that is pretty much it. A couple of scrap pieces of paper for your bumblebee, which I have already stamped and cut out, like so. And we are just going, going to go ahead and varnish all those wonderful edges that we've already scored. And with that, you certainly can use your bone folder um, to crease those edges really good. You're gonna come in with your paper snips and you're gonna cut out each corner where you just, just the corners you're gonna get rid of on every section or every side, I should say. Just get rid of those corners and then I'll show you what else you're gonna do. Okay, and then you're gonna come into these center pieces and you're gonna get rid of those. There's just a little tip with that. When you are steady hands, maybe. Fold these pieces over so you're not gonna cut those off and then just snip that off real quick. Okay, and you're gonna do the same to the other side. Now, what I initially did with this project that I created um, I brought in the smallest layering circle die, and I actually put a circle here. I covered it up with the B because I didn't like the way it was sitting in there, but that smallest circle for your um, layering circles will actually fit a Ferrero Rocher if you want to use those instead, and the gold foil would look great um, if you can't find those bumblebees. So I'm going to leave it because I'm not going to put the bumblebee in the hole that I would create doing so. Um, I'm just going to lay the bumblebee on with a few glue dots. And since the bumblebee is covered, that adhesive on there is not going to cause any issues. Um, so I want to grab my tear and tape. And you're going to flip this over. This is the inside of the box. And you are going to put some adhesive. So... This is how you're going to put this together. You would cut your circle off. The Where your circle is cut, if you're using Ferrero Rocher. Hi, Grandma Sharon. Hope you are well. We miss and love you. Thank you for tuning in today. So you could put, um, when you cut your circle out here, this is where you want to put your tear and tape, okay? And you're going to just add your tear and tape there. And... Make sure it's, and again, Tombow glue works great for 3D projects, so you can certainly use that instead. Um, grab your, take your pick tool, and you can get the top layer of your adhesive off there, the backing. I actually need to order a new take your pick tool. I'm finding that my insert here just falls out on its own. It doesn't stay on there tight anymore. I think it's because it's just so loved. All right, you're going to tuck this in and you can do these one at a time so that you have uh, the right position. So you got that side, you're going to adhere that side, tuck that flap in and adhere that side. So this is where your circle would be. Okay. Um, so you'll have that. I'm going to then grab I do need to cut a, a window out of one of these pieces so that I can put my window sheet in there. So you wanna grab, I actually used, and you can use whatever die you choose to use. I used the stitched shape dies and I used the smallest stitch square. Again, this will you, you can use a punch, whatever you have on hand that's gonna fit in that little spot. Don't feel like you have to use the same products just a way for you to um, customize it on your own. Okay, so I'm going to take this stitched. Can you see? All right, I got, I don't think my camera's up high enough. I think that's the problem. Okay, you're gonna take your stitch square and center it in that spot. Run that through your die machine. And now you have this little window, like so. All right, and now you're gonna come in and you're gonna varnish all these edges with your bone folder. I'm just folding them real quick. I could have had that done already. And you're going to then 
grab your hole punch. And just because I frustrated myself earlier, I'm gonna line this up between these grids. Let's see. And this will be my center. And I'm gonna put two dots there. Just because I totally punched wrong earlier, I'm gonna come in here and you can use any punch you have. Honestly, I don't even know if Stampin' Up! still sells hole punch. I have my Crocodile, which I absolutely love. And you're just gonna come in holding those two pieces together, which is very difficult because you want it to line up when you put the whole thing together. But right now I'm struggling because I messed that one up already, but that's okay. It'll still feed through there. There. All right, so you got your holes punched. You get the gist. <clears throat> Move that out of the way. And now we're gonna come in. We're gonna use some more tear and tape. And we are going to put some tear and tape at those half inch spots that have that little fold in. You're gonna put one there and one there. And you're gonna put some on the bottom of your little box you created. You're gonna peel this off. See how that pops right out of there? I think it's just because it's been so loved. And the fact that I probably dropped it a couple times doesn't help. All right, that gets set right inside that square in between that tear and tape. Make sure it's centered the best you can right up to the edge. And it's gonna be really hard for me to, the hole there actually helps you reinforce that um, on there because you can then rub your bone folder on the inside to make sure that's adhered. So you may actually wanna use, I'm gonna use some Tombow because that's not gonna work for me because I can't reach my finger in there. And I'll show you what I mean. So maybe, maybe, Wow, what is the struggle? Oh, now I have too much. That's why I don't use Tombow. <laughs> but anyway, you can use your Tombow and set that in the center. Like so. And it's okay if it oozes out. It's not a big deal. I use too much. I usually uh, shy away from it. I think you know that story. <laughs> and then just fold those up like so. Okay? Now, oops, I forgot to put my window sheet on. Eh! That's okay, I can fix that because you only use glue dots for that. So where's my window sheet? I lost it. Um, I'm looking, not something that's easy to find. I'm gonna keep, oh, there it is. All right, grab your window sheet, grab your glue dots. It really should not be that difficult to keep things you know close to me that I need <laughs> but it seems to be today <laughs> hi Diane hi Lisa all right we are going to put a glue dot on each corner of our window sheet like so and we are going to which I should have done ahead of time that will slide right on there and frame that perfectly so you have that window on there, okay? And then we're going to add some glue dots to the back of our bumblebee. And I am gonna use my take your pick tool for that because it seems to be a little hard to, you can even use dimensionals, honestly. Just make sure that chocolate is covered because you don't want to put glue on the chocolate. And that just pops right in there, like so. Okay, he's a little cutie, right? We're gonna grab our tear and tape for our piece of designer series paper um, because you want that to stick as well. You certainly um, don't want it falling off on you. And you're going to, and this is definitely more than you need. Um, so at about 10 inches, I'm gonna stop putting tear and tape there. You're gonna peel that backing off.
<laughs> yes, Bonnie. Definitely losing stuff while it's right in front of you is definitely something I do all the time. All right, so I'm going to start by placing this on here in the center of that front and then just wrap it around. Now, if you're using tear and tape, you do not have any forgiveness with that. So you want to make sure you're lining it up where you want it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need a drink of water. Um, so that you are not... Uh, so you don't have to rip it up and then rip your project. Um, and again, that's not really, that's kind of off center, but, and then you can wrap it a little ways around again and just, or actually don't do that because you're going to cover that with something. Grab your paper snips. Uh, these are my glue, um, scissors, so they're not stamping up, but that's okay. All right. So then you got that wrapped around. You're going to grab a dimensional for the back of your B. And you're gonna put that on the front. If you wanted to put a little message on here, you could. You don't have to. And then you're gonna grab your organdy ribbon. You want to make sure that the edges, there's my ribbon scissors. I have scissors for every occasion. I try not to get my ribbon scissors mixed up with anything else because I don't want them to get all gummy from adhesive and stuff, or dull for that matter. You're gonna line that up where you have those holes cut it as an at an angle you can feed it through easier and if you need to trim it again that's fine as you can see I took this off of another project because <laughs> I didn't have any of this and I didn't want to use daffodil delight because it would blend in so I wanted to use something that coordinated with what I already did all right feed that through be gentle you don't want to rip your paper and then you're gonna go ahead I'm going to show you a little trick because I had an issue. This ribbon is kind of stiff, um, which is good because you don't want it to come untied. But I had an issue tying the bow, so I decided to tie it from the back side because that way it would lay the way I wanted it to. And just do your loop and swoop and pull like so. Kind of fuss with it a little, reposition it, tighten it. Just make sure you got enough slack there so you can trim it down if you want to and again it's kind of a stiff ribbon so you might have to play with it after you get it where you want it and I'm going to trim a little bit off this side uh, right here and there is your cute little bumblebee treat holder thank you Ellen thank you so much so those are that little creation. And then I'm gonna show you a little technique after I show you this box. This again was another project. We were given the, um, in Missy's little class <clears throat> that I registered for and, and was a part of for a team event. And excuse me, let me grab a drink. Oh, excuse me, thank you. This is one of those boxes. Let me find my catalog so I can show you what they're called and where you can find them in the book. They are on page 73 in the annual catalog and they are baker boxes. They already have the window in them. They are four and a half by four and a half and two and one eighth inch deep. So that gives you a lot of room for you to put some wonderful treat inside of there. But as you notice, you can, because it's kind of got a glossy finish, you can actually use Visamark and stamp in Visamark and then sponge in whatever color you want to decorate this with. So it leaves that B impression on the outside. So I never knew you could do this, but Missy, Missy showed us how to do that. So I was really excited. So I'm going to actually just show you how, to, how to do that technique. I actually have, and I don't have another baker box, but I have the inside piece of you know, what comes in our paper, our designer series paper, kind of has a glossy finish to it. So we're going to see if we can get this to work. Grab my Visamark and just kind of stamp those bees randomly in Visamark. I'm going to go grab my sponges. Of course, I need Daffodil Delights. Yes, I think I'm going to go with that just so you can see. We'll get Daffodil Delight. And just gotta grab my sponges, sorry. 
my cute little sponge container. You can check out my videos to see how to do that. I did that in one of my videos recently. I think it was organiza Craft Room Organization Session 2 or something like that. Okay, so grab our sponge. I always like to season it a little bit so it's not so strong on our paper, but I really want you to see how this looks. It's just amazing how you can just add ink where that B is and it creates that kind of stamp resist look. How adorable is that? So you have to have like a glossy base to be able to do that, or you can heat emboss the image with clear embossing powder um, and get the same effect and then just sponge around that. So see how easy that is? How awesome is that? Absolutely love that technique. So I'm gonna be using that frequently, I can tell, on cute little gift projects that little sponge back in my container and we're all set there so yes yeah, so then I just embellished and I used the um, gold foil the uh, layering circles and I believe that is the second to the largest let's just grab it nope that's actually the largest I used the largest layering scalloped circle and then I just went down from there, one for the solid circle. And of course, I actually sponged this in, I don't think it's daffodil. It might be, it might actually be so saffron. No, nope, it's daffodil. So, and then I stamped the bees and cut them out with the dies. That gold foil, again, I did um, the honeycomb, but then I in adhered two of the little pieces that popped out on the honeycomb. I put those back in. And then what coordinates amazingly, you have these, um, and mine doesn't have a label on because it's actually the one I used when I was presenting it on stage. You have these amazing um, peaceful poppy sequins, and they have tiny little flowers sequence in them. So I used gold and black on here to accent. And this, this Baker's Twine is actually from the four pack of uh, Country Club Baker's Twine um, so that you can have the same color that you used in your project. Um, but again, you can do these Baker boxes with any type of um, stamp set if you wanted to. But again, we're all doing that hashtag share some sunshine. So my intent for this was um, the intent for this was to put a little honey bun in there, a little Debbie honey bun, um, and give it to someone as a little share the sunshine. So I'm going to do that the next time I get to the store. But yes, those are my projects. I hope you really enjoyed them, these cute little guys. I hope you guys can find those bees. I know, Tammy, you probably definitely want to find those bees um, because, uh, yeah, be creative stamping. Um, Tammy Shea has been uh, sharing a lot of inspiration. Um, but as she always does, um, but her, her business is be creative stamping. And I thought she's going to absolutely love these and want to want to do stuff with them. Here's that other gift that I created using elements from Missy's little goodie bag or goodie box. And then there's the card that I created. So I hope you enjoyed all these. I want to share some happy mail that I got. Um, I actually won a prize from Vicki recently, or not Vicki, from Tammy, sorry. Um, I absolutely adore the stuff that she puts in them, but how cute is that? A little Easter gift that I won from her. I watched her presentation and I got one prize patrol, so it's very awesome. I will have prize patrol from today's broadcast as well. This is a card, love this set. This is a card that I received from my downline, Lori Longwell. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely love those beautiful moments um, that stamp set. This is, we kind of did a secret um, pail, pen pail with our uh, one of our teams. And this was a card I received from another one of my downline, Lori Agressy. Absolutely beautiful with that frosted uh, ribbon from the holiday catalog that carried over. Just beautiful with a nice embossed, simple layering. Adding a few embellishments and some um, die cut images and punched images. And then the inside has that layer. Gorgeous. And then she wrote me a little note so I can reuse that card for someone. This was a card I received. This was a thank you note. Again, from Lori Agressy. 
And this was one of our paper pumpkins. Um, this set was the set uh, that Shelly created. Uh, she is the co-founder of Stampin' Up! And she helped design this paper pumpkin kit with cute coordinating envelopes. And Lori also gave me a little goodie bag. And yes, I'm going to share it because we're all sharing sunshine. And I want to share what people have done for me because it's such a blessing to have all of you in my life. I actually got really teary opening this up um, because of many reasons. We all know I love butterflies. So I got a cute little thing of Kleenex from Lori. And she made me, she borrowed my purse dies from the Best Dressed product suite. Um, so she created this. It's got some Wink Estella, that beautiful ribbon. Um, and she put some gifts in there. I got some hand sanitizer, lavender and cedar wood from Bath and Body Works, it looks like. So she gave me some of that. And there's some chocolates in there. Very cute. Love it. So I'm very excited about that. And we cannot have enough hand sanitizer right now. She also gave me a cute little gift set with some bath soaps in it. It's got some flowers. How perfect does this match the stuff that she gave me? It's so cute when you can get stuff that coordinates with some of the projects you're making. And my favorite, peanut butter M&Ms. Yum. Those are definitely staying in my room so I don't have to share with my husband. My children are allergic to nuts, so... It's just him and I that battle over the peanut butter. <laughs> Actually, I should share because he got a bag of peanut butter M&Ms for, um, for Easter. And I ate half of them. So I probably should share those with him. <laughs> and what else did I get? I got this beautiful card from Amanda. Amanda sent me a little thank you um, or thanking of you card with a little message in there thanking me for something I had sent out to her. Um, which I did not do for any recognition whatsoever. Um, there's some cards missing. Uh, I have to find them. I've just been getting stuff all over the place, and I want to share. There's a couple. I think I may have hung them up. Celine sent me some cards. Um, and I want to find it because it's gorgeous. It's got a butterfly on it. I actually watched her video when she made the card. Um, I'll have to find it. It was a birthday card. It's just for me to pay forward. Um... But I'm not sure where it is at the moment. <sighs> Bummer. I'll share it in a photo. Um, but she sent me a beautiful birthday card that has a butterfly on it. And she tucked in these. And no, no, it's not my birthday. It's just for me to pay it forward. She tucked in these. And now I just misplaced those. Oh, here they are. All over the place. Um, okay. So Celine sent me this cute birthday card that I can reuse for somebody. It's got um, some Wink Estella on that butterfly. I love butterflies. And it's got the cute coordinating envelope. That's those bird ballad. Um... And then I just had something else in my hand that I went and set down. But she sent me little um, pocket size wet wipes. And I just had them in my hand. But she tucked them in this card and sent those to me. Um, because I was saying that I couldn't find any hand sanitizer around. Um, here they are. She sent me four of those. I thought that was the sweetest thing ever. Um, and then she sent me, I got, I won, I got a little gift from her as well. And this is another card she sent me so I can pay that forward. Um, so I guess it's time for me to do the, I'm bringing birthdays back challenge and send out birthday cards. Um, this was a card I received from Gail. Cute. How cute is that? Kind of the same concept of that other, um, the other card I just created kind of with those wings. You just kind of put those um, things together and it creates that kind of wing effect. Cute little card made by her. And let's see who this one's from. Um, oh, I was in need of a spool of ribbon that was no longer available and Debbie from the Glad Hearts team um, and dear friend uh, sent me this beautiful thank you card to thank me for all that I do for her when I should have been thanking her for everything she does for me. Um, she She's just very generous and very kind person. Everybody is so kind and generous right now and always and I just love all the happy mail. And this was a cute little postcard I got from another friend who has stamped with me in the past to thank me for a care package that I sent her and I just thought this was so adorable so thank you everyone for sharing the love and for being a part of my journey oh here's another one 
I'm so excited. This is a card actually we created in my Paper Pumpkin Club, and my friend Judy, who comes to club, sent me this as a thank you for the care package I sent her as well. It was my goal to send sunshine to others, and I was not expecting people to do that. I just wanted to share how grateful I am for people reaching out to me and, and doing the same. Um, very exciting. And I know there's other stuff that I probably overlooked, and I'm going to try and highlight those things as they come. But it just reinforces how awesome it is to share love and um, kindness and and to pay, pay it forward. Make sure that you're, uh, you know brightening someone's day in this crazy chaotic life we're living in currently um and just know that I love all of you and I'm glad to share all this inspiration with you weekly and I will be sharing paper pumpkin because it did come I'm gonna hold off and probably either do that tomorrow or Tuesday um, but I am gonna share the big reveal of the April paper pumpkin kit make a few projects and then I'm gonna start working on alternates so Thank you again so much for being here. Um, the prize patrol for next week, I almost overlooked that. Because I featured the Ornate Garden products um, designer series paper with my projects today, I have a little product share. I have um, six by four designer series paper product share, some of the um, gold faceted gems, that's not what they're called, gilded gems. I have a foot of each of the ribbons and coordinating um, card bases and some envelopes. So share my video, make sure you're commenting here, and next week I will draw a winner to receive this amazing little product share of the um, designer series paper and such so that you can make some little gifts for others as well or just make some cards that you need to send out to others. So, okay, everybody have a blessed week, and I will see you in a day or two. Um, with Paper Pumpkin. I'll announce when I'll be able to do that. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.